A million dollars was set aside this year in the governor's budget for a project critical to the southern tier, cleaning up Chautauqua Lake. It's welcome news to a group that's been studying the lake's health for years now. I took a drive down there to get an update on where that project now stands. In October of 2018, this was the scene at the southern end of Chautauqua Lake. Neighbors tell me dead weeds that built up became so thick, it acted like a net of death. You could see them just flopping around on top. Tens of thousands of fish died. It was just, it just broke our hearts. We don't want it to be a swimming pool, but we do want it to be a lake that's navigationable and fishermen can enjoy it. Kids can swim in it and just have a good time in the lake. This lake, unfortunately, is among the most impaired and we've been on a journey to change that. Those weeds are problem number one here. Problem number two, harmful and smelly algae blooms. When the animals get into the lake, some of them can die from this and humans shouldn't be near the harmful algal blooms either. But the tide has started to turn on this lake, and it's all thanks to the cleaner tides of a nearby lake. Over 10 years ago, a group of neighbors on Lake George joined forces with Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and IBM to dive into what was dirtying up their lake. The group called themselves the Jefferson Project. And they created, they called it the smartest lake in the world. They found out road salt was a big problem there. After cleanup, Today, Lake George has been named one of the cleanest lakes in the country. And that inspired the start of the Jefferson Project here four years ago. Led by the Chautauqua Institution, pontoon boats with impressive technology are launched every summer on Chautauqua and attached to the bottom of the lake. They're able to get millions of data points every minute, helping researchers figure out what's wrong here. We found that there's low oxygen or no oxygen in major portions of the North Basin. When a lake uh, lacks oxygen at a certain depth, what that means is that certain things that naturally should be growing here aren't growing anymore. And that has a ripple effect throughout the entire ecosystem of the lake. They've also learned runoff from agriculture around the lake and people's properties could be leading to those harmful algal blooms. And they've installed monitoring stations in specific tributaries that lead into the lake. There are parts of our watershed that are the major contributors to our dumping sediment into this lake. Through the um, Chautauqua Watershed Conservancy, we're working with private landowners now um, to do things like restore stream bed. It also has identified that the bottom actually has a wave associated with it, similar to what's on the top. And so when that wave brings up sediment from the bottom to collide with the silt that's coming off of the land into the lake, that's where we find an algal bloom. So far, all of this has cost about six million dollars. But now neighbors are asking, what's the next step? I have faith in them. They'll get the data, but the action part is what's a concern. You know, we have data. We've had data on this lake over the past 20 years. It's the action part that I'm concerned about. I'm told cleanup pilot projects will start soon, and change you can see is around the corner. Our hope is uh, in the next year or two, the actionable things that we can do will be shorter, will be longer than the short list we can create right now. Our goal is uh, we'll give Lake George the number one spot, but we'll gladly take number two of the healthiest lakes when we're done. So you may question, why does this matter if you don't live on Chautauqua? Well, Chautauqua flows in the Chattaquin River. Then that goes into the Conowongo Creek, and all of that eventually flows into the Mississippi. The Jefferson Project hopes what they're doing here will lead to cleanup efforts in bodies of water across the entire U.S. Well, coming up tomorrow, I have a second story from Chautauqua. Neighbors in the south end of the lake are upset about another separate issue turning their area of the lake into a wetland. I'll have that story tomorrow on News 4 at 6 o'clock.